Well, hello. So this video follows the process of me building a 10-string hollow-bodied instrument. I'm calling it an American lute. Uh, it's, I, I was thinking in terms of like a banjo, and you'll see how that works out. Um, it's got a 10 strings. Uh, it's a hollow acoustic body with a wooden top, and I did put some Fishman electronics in it. So, which I customized a little bit. And so you'll get to see that process. I hope you enjoy the build. Uh, I hope it takes the mystery out of some things and people begin to realize, you know, that you could realize, hey, I could do that and give it a shot. And uh, there are other things you could do. You don't have to do everything the same way I did. And I think I talk about that in the process. After the build process is over, we'll look at the finished product. Uh, hello, this is a uh, I'm working on this project. It's a design that I came up with in my head for an acoustic style body, round acoustic body with a wooden sides, wooden top, wooden back, and a 10 string banjo neck that I will have to build yet. And, and it'll be tuned in a banjo style tuning. So to kind of be a crossover between, you know, banjo and 12 string guitar in a way, uh, but it's only gonna have 10 strings instead of 12. And uh, two of the strings will be a G drone string, like on a banjo. So that's what's going on. So what I did, the first thing I did was I made some plywood rings. And when I, when I, you make those, these, you just you get your this um, half inch plywood. You get it together. Any plywood will work basically. You you get it together. You mark out your circle. You cut both pieces together in one circle. While it's still nailed together. Uh, we drilled the holes and sanded it uh, round and smooth so that it would take the plywood well. Then we took it apart and um, we fashioned these end blocks. And one, the neck goes through one and one is just the tail end, tailpiece block. And they're notched. You can see the notch. They're notched so that the plywood is glued here. But then there's another piece here that the top or back can also glue to as you're gluing them on. And uh, that will create, it's already just solid as a rock. Then uh, before the blocks were glued in, went ahead and used doweling to create the space. And the blocks, we put, a, put them in loose and then just uh, <clears throat> glued, the, uh, glued the doweling in place and, and measured in each spot to make sure it was the same depth, which is approximately three and a half inches. Um, so that it would come out even with the blocks. And then wrapped bendy ply plywood around it. Bendy ply plywood has all the grain going in the same direction so it bends, which is a really nice product when you want to do things like this. And Now I understand some people want genuine wood sides and everything, but the bending process is, well, just that. It's a process and takes time and etc. And, and I haven't really discovered that uh, what the sides of an instrument are made out of are significant. The the top and back have some effect on it, although one of my nice sounding instruments is all plywood. So um, the the Puerto Rican Quattro is, that I have is all plywood and, and it sounds beautiful. So um, I, I don't, you know, guys want to get upside down in different woods and all that. I use what I can use and Generally, everything sounds good. The top on this one will be that white cedar fence boards because there's, well, we have some and I'm going to use it. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what the back's going to be yet. So uh, we've done that. I put the bendy ply on, you wrap it around, you glue, you know, there's glue and, and it's just brad nailed in place. This seam is where the neck will bolt on. So it will be completely hidden from sight. And uh, anyone could build this, mostly. It, you know that that it's not a it's not a difficult concept. It's not a difficult process. Uh, you're talking about a 13 and a half inch ring on the outside diameter, and you know just some plywood doweling, a couple in blocks, and um, that are just notched. You can you know it's not a complicated thing, and then wrap it with bendy ply. And what you end up with is a real solid circle that you can make an acoustic instrument out of. Now, some, some of you might think, well, I don't know if it'll sound good. Well, that's what we're going to find out. 
So if you hang in there at the when all this build process is over at the end of this video, you'll get to see here the the instrument played and and you can judge for yourself. So the next step that I'm going to get ready to do is to wrap veneer around this. So the one drawback of the bendy ply honestly is I just don't think it looks that good. I I mean I on a on a larger instrument you can just natural finish the bendy ply and it looks fine because the bends are really uh, much more gradual. But but on, on something like this, um, the wood doesn't finish out that well. It's not that pretty. Um, I, certainly you could stop and say, I'm not putting veneer on it and you could do whatever you want with it. But it's just not a nice surface in terms of uh, my goal is I'm not staining any of the wood on this go around. Everything is completely natural. So I, I'm going to use the veneer that I've been using, which makes a really nice natural look also, in, even though I, I stained it on the last build. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to wrap around this with the, with the veneer. I'll cut it to fit. And um, what I do, I'm not saying you have to, but what I do for my veneer is I use well wood contact cement, which makes it really easy. A lot of woodworkers are, are using it for veneer. And this particular veneer has a paper backing also. So it works pretty well. And that's what the veneer looks like. And it, it'll be, it'll make for a beautiful side. And um, I just put contact cement all the way around this. I put it on the piece that I'm putting it on. I wait 15 minutes and I wrap it and it's done. And that's a, that's a really nice feature. And then the next thing then of course will be to make sure that the veneer is sanded even. And I give thanks to Tom Stimmerman who um, actually sanded all of this even for me. Uh, I was just as a, as a kindness because um, of being busy and also um, I was a little under the weather. So he went ahead and took care of that for me and, and that was very kind of him. And uh, in fact, uh, that's kind of how some of this build is going is I say, here's what I want to do and he does it for me as, a, as an act of kindness and I sure appreciate it. Uh, so I'll be getting the veneer on and then uh, I'll be gluing the, the boards I want to use for the top together in, into a width. You know, I'll joint the edges and glue them together so that I can cut a circle out and I'll get the top on. And um, somewhere at that point I'll start carving on a neck and I, I need to build the neck. Um, what I'm doing with this is I have a very nice uh, banjo case that my wife got me for my birthday last year and it's a flight case so it's it's really a, a well designed good quality you know case and I've been measuring as I go to make sure this will fit in it I use it on my plectrum banjo and also the Tigerwood banjo I just built fits in it nicely so um, I'd like to build a nice instrument that fits in that nice case. So that's the goal. I hope uh, I hope that helps and and you get an idea for what's being done here. So here's where we're at on the banjo build. Uh, I the circle put the veneer on it um, and it's under clamps in a different location right now, gluing the the top on. But I do have the neck with me as I'm working on it. And so um, what you can see here, and I wanted you to see the rough aspects of it. This is where I stacked up some wood to get this depth, and it was just a regular board. Um, uh, I think it's some sort of a light cherry is my guess. It's hardwood, and it's going to go on there. And then um, I also, you can see the glue joint here where I glued another piece on the back side of the board. Then I cut my 15 degree angle in here and uh, put a little doodah thing uh, to just you know that's kind of your hand stop it's uh, helps support the truss rod there's a truss rod in there you'll look on the screen you can see a picture of the neck with the truss rod in before i glued the, the fretboard on um, i'm using i'm actually using an adjust, a commercial adjusted truss rod on this one uh, i just think with the tension of 10 strings i want to be able to adjust it um, using spalded maple for a fretboard, you can see I marked my lines. I'm getting ready to 
cut those and um, get all those uh, fret notches in. And then I'm going to be drawing out the neck shape. Uh, I'll probably um, draw it on the back side so that I have a real nice flat surface when I'm working on the bandsaw. I will also draw out a headstock pattern and and that's what's next. So I'll be right and I'm, I'm gonna notch it here. So part of this fretboard will just kind of begin to hang on the, the top of the sound hole. And uh, so I'm getting that's what's happening. I'm gonna design a headstock and uh, mark all that out and cut it. I'll first order business. I'll be notching the, the fretboard so that I don't accidentally move those marks or anything since I've got them there. And away we go. And it's it's cut here to fit the uh, body. And so all this will end up being rough cut uh, on a bandsaw to the general shape. And then uh, I'm going to put it in my vise and uh, start trimming it with a draw knife. So that's where we're at right now. So here we are um, working on this crazy 10 string build I'm doing. And I thought I'd start by showing the body. So this is what I have so far. And you'll remember I made this frame work. I put some end blocks in and I use bendy ply and veneer around the sides and it should give us some sound <laughs> and these were old fence boards I meant to take a picture of I have some that aren't plain I meant to take a picture of them and haven't so um, I'll do that next time so you can see how these started out and um, I left the knot hole because every good instrument needs a knot hole especially if it belongs to a knot head and so it's mine so that's what I'm doing and uh, I've sanded it uh, smooth I, I almost uh, routed it to put some binding in but I decided with the way it's going to be uh, just I'm trying to keep things as as natural as possible with wood so that's what that looks like. I've been working on the neck over here um, and I'll, I'll take it out in a minute and show you my progress but uh, in the process what's going on is you can see I've been shaving and um, shaving the neck and, and what I do this is just an old cheap old vice. I don't have a lot of workspace. This is what you see is pretty much the workspace I have and uh, I just prop the, I get the heel in here and I'll carve that with a different knife, something like this later. And uh, I just get that here and I just work my knife here like this. And I'm at that point where I'm really trying to keep it smoother as I carve. So I'm not trying to pull the big chips off. And uh, sometimes I flip the knife back and forth depending on the direction the grain's going and it seems to help me keep the, the neck smooth. Uh, the smoother I keep it, the less rasping and less sanding there will be. And so um, this is what we've got so far. I of course broke a piece here and I do have the piece somewhere. And I'm going to reattach this piece that I broke. And fortunately, the fretboard's made out of spalded maple, so anomalies look good on it. And I'm going to, I'll reattach that. And it's not going to be a problem because there'll be frets that go across it. And it also will glue here, so it'll be glued to the, the face. So that's, that's what we're looking at here as we prog, as we progress through the, through the build and uh, you can see I've got my um, truss rod sticking out a little bit there and uh, I'll have to make a cover for that so what I'm working on now is just carving this neck and um, I've got to flip it that's why I took it out of the vise time to flip it and work down here 
and um, it actually feels pretty good. I, um, you know, it's going to have 10 strings, so I can't narrow it too much, but um, it's feeling, it's feeling pretty good. It's not too thick or anything, so uh, I think I'll enjoy it. And then um, I'm going to be finished with the draw knife here, and then I'll take a hand knife and something, I have a different one like this with a straighter cutting edge and something with a straighter cutting edge and I'll work in here and I'll round all these corners and blend it and you'll get to see that and uh, I'll also be doing some work on this this is a little too straight and generic looking for my taste so I'll, I'll carve around and make it come down and blend and uh, give it some you know uh, different different angles and that's what we're doing and I'm confident I'm working with cherry after carving on it a little bit you can see that it's some type of cherry in the grain it's a pretty wood it's it's gonna make a very nice neck and I get a real kick out of the spalded ma maple I think that's gonna be pretty that's what we're doing just uh, I've been working away on this uh, instrument I think I'm gonna end up calling it an American lute uh, and I'll probably explain that further but uh, it kind of starting to look a little like one and technically the banjo is part of the lute family it's part of a family of instruments called the spike lute so anyhow more about that another time so i've got the body done with the top on um, i have yet to put the back on so this is what it looks like um, and i've cut a hole here because it's getting some Fishman electronics. I happen to have some, is why it's getting them. If it didn't, I probably wouldn't have bought any. But I had some, and so I thought, well, hey, let's install some Fishman electronics in this so I can plug it in if I ever need to. And uh, it came out really well with the veneer and the top, so I chose not to do binding. I kind of like the sedate look. And the inside, put all the bracing in, and I, I use fan bracing. Uh, I've used X bracing. Uh, the only thing I haven't tried really on, on an instrument is ladder bracing, and um, that would just be all your straight across braces with nothing else, you know, and usually like on a guitar, a small guitar, they used it back in the day uh, before Martin started building X bracing. A lot of the old time guitars just had what was called a ladder brace, and um, if you want that 30s or 40s guitar sound, you, you almost have to build a ladder brace to really get the sound that you want. But um, I use a fan bracing. I, I, I'm a fan of fan bracing. I really kind of like it. Um, it's classical guitar bracing, really, but I've used it. I used it in my plectrum guitar, and it seems to be real lively and, and everything. So I hope it will be on this. It's a smaller compartment but I think it'll be fine and um, there's you can see uh, there's the doweling when I put the frame together things like that so um, and and there's a picture on the screen of how I clamp the bracing in which is common Mo uh, a lot of actual luthiers do it in a similar way where you just lay it down and you you have thin sticks and they're bent and the pressure of that bin pushes on the stick and so there's a couple pictures and you can see how that was done my point uh, behind some of this is that this is not an impossibly difficult thing for someone to do especially if you have some experience or inclination with working with wood and uh, you know you don't have to build the body the same way I do if you want to a hollow body banjo you know you certainly don't have to build a neck with tin strings you could just bolt any banjo neck you want on there but you just buy a banjo neck and put it on there and I've seen builds where guys um, they just take the the rim the, a wooden rim and a neck uh, that you normally would build a banjo with and then they build a, a, a top for it out of wood and glue that onto the rim and finish it and then um, put the put your banjo neck on like a normal banjo neck where it's a through it's got a through bolt or two rod system is what I usually build when I build a regular banjo. Um, and then uh, if I was doing that, 
uh, I would also put a resonator on the back of it and um, and instead of having a sound hole the sound would come out the back and and be pushed forward by the resonator like a standard banjo and the only difference is instead of a skin top and a bunch of tension hooks you'd have you'd have a solid piece of wood on there and uh, those I've heard them they sound good and so you could always do that if you wanted to I chose to build this this framework which is not difficult as I've shown you um, and and building and, and putting the the, um, the bracing in is really quite simple uh, as you've seen in the picture so it's a doable thing I love I love instrument builds that um, take the mystery out of things and, and when you build an instrument and you can say you could you could do this it's not that hard and the wall thickness of your instruments not really that important um, and some guys go, oh yes it is but there's this guy Lloyd Lohr a famous luthier um, that designed the f-style mandolin for a Gibson company and uh, back in the day the Kalamazoo Gibson and uh, he was he was quite the designer and and he was he was really responsible for many of the early instruments of Gibson now Orville Gibson designed the the A body style I have a I have one of those myself a 1908 Gibson mandolin that my dad that was my dad's and um, but uh, but the F style uh, that was a Lloyd Lohr and he built some guitars and Oh my word, you know, they had band of cellos, band of bass, mandolas, every kinds of, all kinds of things. But Lloyd Lohr actually made a guitar with, uh, with walls, with the sides were something like a half an inch thick. And then just put a top and a back on it and it sounded great. So he, he kind of proved that the side wasn't the issue, uh, the wall. And so even when you think of banjos that guys make wood top, wooden top banjos with just the banjo rim and the rim is, you know, maybe a half an inch to three quarters thick, depending on the rim you get, uh, and they sound good. So the wall isn't crucial. So if you didn't want to, be, if you didn't have bendy ply or you didn't want to use bendy ply, you could actually just take a boards. Uh, I like hardwood when I'm doing that. It's not necessary, but I like it because it's hard and it pushes sound out the front. And, and so I'll explain that in a minute. But you could just make like an octagon with some boards, you know, just cut your angles and build an octagon and that would be your wall. And then you put a top and a back. And so when you talk about the top, that's a, you want to get it down to, I plane it down to an eighth of an inch and then that it gets a little thinner as you sand on it, etc. But um, I like softwood for the top with, and it doesn't, I mean, I used fence boards. It, it did, and there's a picture of what the boards looked like before they got planed down right there. But um, it could be, this is a, it's a cedar, it's a, and uh, it's a white cedar, and um, <clears throat> then you could use regular cedar, uh, you know, Northwest type cedars. Uh, <clears throat> you can use redwood, which if you can get it, uh, spruce, uh, pine. Uh, my wife plays a guitar that's completely made out of pine. Uh, as a little Gretsch Jim Dandy is a pine guitar, and it's a, it sounds wonderful. Um, so, you, you know, it's that same old thing. Use what you got. And then I like to put, when I put the back on, I, this is going to be, it's going to have a maple back. I've got a board that's access to a board that's curly maple. And I'll make a back out of that. Uh, and I really like that combo personally because the, the maple is a really hard wood. And it, when, the, when the sound bounces off the maple, it pushes it through the softwood uh, and gets things vibrating. So it's a good combo, that's why people like it. But at the same time, um, there's been argument that plywood guitars actually are louder. Uh, I don't know, I've never built a plywood guitar. I 
you know, I've owned some and they sound fine. Um, I have a Puerto Rican Quattro that is plywood and it's a tin string and um, it actually has a beautiful tone and it's a plywood top. It's just a eighth inch plywood and um, it's amazing how that it sounds. Uh, so, you know, I, my ultimate thought on that is if it sounds good, play it. If it sounds bad, play it privately <laughs> so no one has to hear. So that's my thought on tops and backs and sides. Uh, let's take the mystery out of instrument building and have some fun with it. And, and uh, if you don't, if you can't make it perfect, make it as nice as you're able and see if you can get some good sound out of it. It's fun. It's a hobby. It's something you're doing. And then you can say, well, I did that. Um, I'll talk more about uh, what I do for a rosette, what I'm going to be doing for a rosette on this. I've done it before, but um, when I actually get to the rosette, you can buy a rosette if you want, but I also made a three inch hole, uh, a little smaller than a guitar. I can just get my hand in there. So that's important for the electronics. Um, and, uh, I, I actually make a rosette on the computer and print it on a, on a what, what's called water slide uh, decal stuff. And, um, and I just make some colored rings and put it on there and it, it, it will work fine. So that's the plan. Now we get to the neck and where I'm at on this. And the dots are inlay. They're, they're not stickers. They're actually inlay dots that I bought. They're kind of a green uh, shell. And of course the fretboard is spalded maple. So that's actually some kind of, I don't know, mold or something or fungus that causes that colorization, but I like it. And uh, so I've shaped the headstock, got my tin holes in there. There's the truss rod. Um, and, and it'll actually look nice. It goes, I, I cut it so it covers the sound hole a little bit, kind of gives that um, that cute look to it and, um, <clears throat> we've shaped it and sanded it all down uh, and everything so it will actually bolt on there'll be some you know there'll be some studs in there and it'll slide in and bolt on kind of like a banjo neck does and that's what we're working on. So I have to put frets in it today, uh, or get to, uh, and uh, that's the next step. I need to put, I'm gonna go ahead, before I put it on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the frets in. It's not that difficult. And uh, I won't put the nut on. I made the nut out of, uh, well, here. So I made a nut and I had some tiger wood laying around and I went ahead and made a nut obviously because I recently built a banjo out of tiger wood and so the nut goes like that now it's really just a string guy because this has a fret that goes here for a nut it's called zero fret I really like zero frets because uh, then your adjustments right it's it's that simple your string height at the nut is right because it's just a fret and uh, the first time I ever uh, saw zero fret was on a Moserite electric guitar back in the 70s. Uh, I was a kid and uh, I just thought it was the coolest thing and, and the action was really good. And, and uh, So I, I have some instruments with zero frets uh, and, and I like it and uh, not all of them, some of them aren't. But um, I tend to, nowadays, when I'm building my own fretboard, plan for a zero fret. I just, so far, so good. I hope this one is too. So I made that, and then I also made a truss rod blank cover out of this, out of Tiger Wood. That'll go on like that. And so that'll be the look. That's where we're at on the build. And um, well, I'll show you more when I... When I get more done and I'm, I hope that takes some of the mystery out of it and uh, that you're willing to get, you know if you want to build something do it and uh, you know I know it's it's 
you, you get to worrying when you get some nice wood and you don't want to mess it up and all of that. But um, if you don't try, you don't get anywhere. And, and if part of part of the process is making mistakes and goofing things up and, and having to fix those. Sometimes you make a mistake and you have to kind of figure out how to repair it or work around that. Um, in the scheme of doing this in your life and having some fun with it. That's just the cost of having a hobby, I think. And, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you have to start over, I suppose. And I usually am able to uh, make things work somehow, but um, don't get discouraged and just have fun. Well, with so I <laughs> thought I'd show you where we're at on the 10 string American lute or 10 string banjo build that we're involved in. and. Um, I've got the neck finished um, and it's sanded to uh, 400 and the side I haven't finished sanding all the way to 400 because I still have to put the back on. This is what it looks like. The neck's all fastened on. What I've done, it's got three uh, lags bolted and it's glued. Um, a little overkill but it's there and uh, you can see you know the bracing and the fan bracing etc. I've also drilled a hole here um, and the reason being is I happen to have some Fishman electronics that I will be installing and uh, so they'll go in like that and that's why these pieces of wood here because the curve is pretty um, extreme for this particular unit but it'll fit in like that and um, and it has an in p an uh, in pin jack uh, that'll go in there so it doubles as the plug-in for the cord and the strap button and this i've had to retro or i will be working on that today with some soldering because rather than having the normal uh transducer braid that goes under a bridge on a guitar like this I'm going to put one of these paddle sensors in hopefully that will work nicely and it'll go in about here like like so on the fate on the on the soundboard and uh, pick up the vibration and uh, we'll see how that sounds it should be fine I've done it in other instruments and it came out really oh, well um, that's what's going on I'll be putting electronics in today and kind of getting them in place this won't be mounted it'll just be stuffed in the hole because I still have to put the finish in um, but I don't have a lot I forgot about how I was doing this so I don't have a lot of hand room so I I've decided to go ahead and set everything up before I glue the back on and it's gonna as I said before it's gonna get a curly maple back once the back's in place, I've got a little trim work I want to do here. Um, I'm thinking, I'm not sure what kind of wood I'm going to use yet, but I'll use something that kind of accents everything. I've finished the fret job. I've put side dots in. And uh, so the next step will be uh, gluing, well, I have to make the back and glue it on and um, then finish sand everything and I'll start putting some lacquer on. So just a quick little update on my progress um, got the neck fastened on the tops on uh, got some electronics in here we'll talk about in a minute <coughs> holes are all drilled for the tuners that's the back side inside I've uh, I've <coughs> I had a fishman onboard electronics unit and um, I also had a bunch of these little pads these and so I had to rewire things to hook to the fishman because it didn't it came with a braid which I used on a classical guitar so um, that's kind of where I'm at with that and it works and I plugged it in and it registers so we'll see how that goes and those will end up being just in front of where the floating bridge will ride on this instrument so I'll design a floating bridge. I have a tailpiece made. Uh, of course, I don't know where I put the tailpiece, but beautiful maple tailpiece made by Tom Zimmerman. 
uh, who did that for me with a saw and router and sander, etc. And I'm real grateful. And it's going to be a nice addition. It'll hold 10 strings. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I've got the back put together. It's not, it's not cut into a circle, but it'll go on like that. And what we're going to do, so this was just a board. It, you know, well, we split it into three and planed it down to an eighth of an inch and glued it together. And now, I, what I'm going to do first is um, cut out the, the, the shape, the circle. And I, I always cut it a little bit big, not much, maybe an eighth of an inch big, so I can sand it to the sides. And um, that's what we'll do. So once I get the circle on, uh, then I'll do some sanding, make sure everything's flush and even, and uh, glue uh, just a couple of ladder braces across it uh, and glue the back on. Once that's on, it's really just a lot of sanding and getting it ready for finish. And uh, I'm excited about that because that means we'll be putting clear coat on soon. So success, it fits in the case. And so that's good news. So that's a little tune I wrote for my dad years ago. He used to tease me a bit because I wouldn't always play my guitar mandolin as much as he thought I should. And he'd come over to visit with his mandolin and he'd ask me where my guitar and mandolin were and I'd say they're in the closet and he'd say get your harp down out of the willow son. And so I wrote a little uh, song for him. I don't remember all the words I have written down somewhere. but. Uh, called get your harp down out of the willow sun and it was a reference to the psalm where uh, when they went into the babylon captivity they hung their harps in the willows by the rivers of babylon because they didn't want to sing a strong song in a strange land so that was just a fun little thing well this is the finished product that's what it sounds like with finger picks uh, we also I, I can use a flat pick i got one sitting here somewhere and um that's that's a nice feature. So, it's nice to be able to use a flat pick. I haven't experimented much with it on this particular instrument, but um, I'm thinking of using it to back up my youngest daughter singing a song at Christmas Eve service so I might play leads like a mandolin on it so we'll see I haven't practiced it yet but we'll give it a shot and this is it with bare hands just more of a here it's a rolling cube uh, it's a <coughs> 50 watt battery operated uh, amp I do have plugged in but that reproduces a sound So that's how that works. And that's with no effects, nothing. It's just, you know, straight, clean, no, no reverb, no chorus, nothing through the amp. So that's a nice, uh, that's a pretty nice sound, I think. I'm quite happy with it. So uh, just looking at the finished product, what we have here. <clears throat> Let me move my chair a little closer. What we have here is um, you can see the, the it's actually Port Orford cedar that, that's on here. I've been calling it white cedar. I don't 
think there's much difference, but there it is. There's the knot that we start out with because it fence boards. I made a pick guard out of some veneer. Uh, this, the colorization on that was I rubbed some fretboard oil onto it, and then I rubbed Old English onto it and rub that down really good to give it a little extra color so it stand out from the top more. And that's the natural color of the veneer. There's the curly maple back. Uh, let's see, the spalded fretboard uh, treated that with fretboard oil. Uh, the, it says Chazman, I put that on the ones I built and then it's got a little Celtic cross there. Uh, those were just printed onto water slide paper from my computer and then you know like the kid when you're kids you had model decals you, you put it in a thing of water and it comes off and you put it on there now what I do when I'm doing a water slide on on an instrument I usually get a couple coats of grain sealer on it I use a spray shellac actually to seal the grain and then I get the water slide on and then I all of my coats of lacquer go over that and so, so that's what that looks like. And on the back, looks like that. So I did round this more, make it less generic looking. The hummingbird represents my wife, who's from Trinidad in the West Indies. It's the land of the hummingbird. And she's always humming and singing. So I like to put a hummingbird on my instruments uh, in honor of her. And um, the waters, the, the rosette are just colored rings uh, printed out on my computer on the water slide, slid on there. In all honesty, that's tricky business to get that rosette on there, stuck, cut it out, not have it falling apart or crinkling. It's a little bit of work, but it's worth it, I think. Now, you can also order rosettes that stick on and different things like that if you don't want to go to the trouble. I actually boogered this one up down here, which was fortunate because I put pick guard on there and it ended up looking like I did it on purpose. The bridge is a floating bridge. It was just the center piece from an old classical guitar bridge. It's black walnut. I just cut the little piece out to hold the saddle. It's got a bone saddle. And um, <clears throat> put that in for the floating bridge. Tom Stimmerman made this tail piece. The strings just go through the holes. And then there's the end pin jack. Um, and there's our electronics that are fishmen. And you can see I shaped the neck. I made a little trim out of some stained veneer here that kind of goes with the neck. And uh, that's what the neck looks like. And it all came out good. Great action. Plays well. Uh, I'm happy with the sound. Happy with the outcome. So I hope you've enjoyed this build process. And, and I also hope it encourages you to think in terms of uh, maybe being willing to give it a shot you know it doesn't ever have to be as complex as what i might do but the truth is it wasn't that hard it's not rocket science and and i'm not being facetious about that i think if you would just start working with things you'd find out you could do it and if you've built a few other instruments and you just haven't tried to dive into a you know a from scratch hollow body type instrument that's a good way to go and and it worked well so I, I'd encourage you, you know, give it a shot and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Don't give up because uh, that's how we learn. So the Lord bless you and I hope you enjoyed the video.